Hey guys, Mike here, thanks for tuning in. So today we talk about the new Death and Darkness STX. It's the latest expansion for Superior Tomorrow 3 um, from Toontrack. Uh, Toontrack was kind enough to give me a free copy to do this review, which I'm happy to do. So thanks to Norman and the guys from Toontrack for giving me a free copy of that. We really appreciate that. So it's just Metal Month 2019, just ended. Um, as per tradition, every single year Toontrack announces Metal Month where they come up with MIDI packs and um, new amps and uh, especially drum sample software or new libraries which are dedicated for metal and hard rock because that's kind of like the DNA or the heritage of Toontrack where they came from. However, this year, uh, finally, they came up with a new metal uh, expansion, guys, and I know a lot of guys out there have been waiting for a new dedicated metal library. But as always, uh, don't be misled by the names. I will show you in my review that this new library is for sure not only the best metal library they ever released, in my opinion, but it's more than that. For me, it can be the new core library for any drum uh, production when you need good sounding samples. When for all of you who don't want to listen to my talking uh, in this review, I made two separate videos because this new SDX comes with two different libraries in one. So you get a real value for money. Um, I made a preset video as always, where you just can listen to all the preset tune track released with this pack, both from the engineers uh, through Madsen from Denmark and Mark Lewis from the United States, uh, but also the rocket. So you get a good picture of what you get when you purchase this software. You find the links in the description box below or somewhere here in the video. Additionally, I uh, made a drum cover, uh, which I did some years ago. Uh, as always, I used the MIDI performance that I uh, performed some years ago, just threw it on the new library and remixed it. So you get an idea how those samples sound in contracts is from Avenged Sevenfold, Hail to the King. It's not speed metal, I know, but probably the most metalish song I ever covered. So if you want to listen to that, check in the description box, you will find everything down there. So without further ado, let's listen to some metal drums. So welcome to my in-depth review here. So what are we talking about? Um, I won't bore you with too much details because as every time Toontrack released a, an own dedicated microsite for this SDX. So I highly recommend as always go to Toontrack.com, check the particular site for this uh, SDX, Death and Darkness. You will find a tons of information, interviews with the producers, pictures of the drum set. Um, and all the different stuff. So you can really, if you are interested in this nerdy information, go to Toontrack to check this stuff out. So just the key facts. Um, the Death and Darkness SDX are basically um, two SDX or two libraries. Um, when you install this pack, you get two full or independent um, libraries, which will show up in uh, the software here as two different libraries. This one here is the so-called Death uh, library which was recorded in Sonic Ranch in Texas by Mark Lewis and when you here go to the drop down menu where you find all the other um, libraries you will find the darkness library uh, uh, here's the second one so basically you have two different libraries um, and this is a very cool thing I talk about this in a, in a second why this is so important and great to have two different libraries coming under one brand but let's go back to the death library and start here. Um, just some key facts. Uh, you have nine complete different drum kits combined into uh, both libraries. Uh, 19 bass drums, you have 19 snare drums, 35 cymbals, and of course some additional kick drums and snare drums, which I'm gonna talk about. So what basically um, Toontrack is saying, um, like one is called death and one is called darkness. Of course, this is kind of like a marketing slogan. Uh, I would rather say that one, uh, this one here, the death library is, I would headline this as more US sounding and the darkness more European sounding when it comes to metal. Um, 
And another headline uh, that came into my mind after some days of testing is that the death library is pretty much a straightforward, modern sounding <clears throat> drum library, a contemporary sounding library, while the Darkness SDX, um, which was recorded in Denmark at Ant Farm Studios, is more really like a raw, wild, unprocessed, completely unprocessed library. But I will talk about this in detail. So let's start here with the death library. And uh, right from the start, Toontwick made a lot of things right with this new SDX. And I'll talk you and I'll show you in a second why. So um, first about the drum sets they used here, uh, or which Mark Lewis uh, used together with Toontwick. We have a Yamaha recording custom from the 90s, legendary drum kits, one of the most recorded, if not the most recorded drum set in music history. We have a Gwetch Square Batch, and there's a certain story to this, which I'm going to talk about in a second, with two different kick drum options. We have a DW Collector's Maple Kit and a Sonor Designer Series Birch. So just looking at the brands here, um, this is something I was waiting for a long time. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love all those vintage Ludwig Gwetch um, kit that you usually find on a lot of libraries. Um, those drums from the 60s, 70s, like those kind of like vintage, um, laid back, warmer sounding drums sound great and I love them too. But I was always looking for a library that just contains modern sounding drums. And here we go, guys. This is exactly what I've been dreaming of uh, for a good reason. The second thing, and I can show you when I switch the drum kits here. So let's uh, switch, for instance, to the DW Maple. Um, for every single drum kit in both libraries, um, all the complete setup has been sampled. So always you have always five toms, you have always two kick drums, <clears throat> which is amazing. Uh, some things, or one of the few things that really annoyed me on some libraries from Toontrick is that, for instance, um, on the core library or some other expansion packs, you, let's say you find a drum kit uh, that you really like, but it just came with two toms, while others contain five or six toms. Uh, this time they really like really went straight and said we're gonna sample every single drum kit with a complete setup um, so you have to make no compromises or to add new stuff from other libraries uh, the snares all metal guys um, and not metal I mean really literally out of metal uh, you won't find any wood snare on both libraries where neither the dark nor the uh, death library and just the cream of the crop here uh, Tama Babres, Tama Babres from the 80s. This is a difference. I will talk about this in a second as well. Uh, Sonor, Yamaha, DW, Drumcraft, and of course, the legendary Ludwig Black Beauty. Um, Symbol-wise, Zildjian, not too much. Uh, remember from the Metal Foundry, you had literally like double the amount of symbols, but it's same for the, for the drums. On the symbols, they really picked just modern classic sounding symbols no too fancy or white stuff um, or too like white crazy effect symbols you have everything you need for a modern sounding drum kit a pair of heads two chinas one on the left one on the right um, remembering some guys complaining that sometimes the china is just on the right or just on the left and you have to do those turnaround tricks to switch positions now you have china left and china on the right you have three crash symbols uh, as main crashes, like one on the left, one in the middle, one on the right. I write on the right and two different slots for splash symbols. And of course, there's always some situations where you might need five symbols, crash symbols. But this whole setup is exactly what I always wanted, because of course, you can go with one tom, one rack tom, one floor tom and just one kick drum. No problem at all. But you can go all the way. So. Let's jump into some sound examples here. Let me switch to the um, default kit, which is the Yamaha Recording Custom, together with the Tama Baber set. So just you get an idea. Remember, I did a dedicated video with all the presets, uh, so you can listen along to every single raw kit and the preset. But just for the sake of doing it, let's start with the Yamaha Recording Custom in the Death Library recorded in Sonic Ranch, Texas. <laughs>
And you might already hear, um, I mean, it's the MIDI groove that comes along. Uh, I've picked just like something here to build a groove. Um, metal is not determined by the drums you use. Metal is the way how you play the drums <clears throat> and how you process the drums. Uh, this is just a rec Yamaha recording custom with a Tama Belber snare. And this is a setup that you can use I don't know, for any genre you think of. Um, so don't be misled by the name. Um, this library is just fantastic. I just started to realize after some days working with this. Um, another cool thing um, and another cool sound that I wanted to show you, um, they all sound really, really fantastic. Um, the whole library contains, um, I think, let me check, uh, I've surely blended in now, I think 200, 300 gigabytes of data. So of course the libraries get bigger and bigger uh, because nowadays computer and, and uh, storage capabilities are getting cheaper and bigger. However, for some of you, might, this might be a problem. And when I load just the core kit, you see here on the top right, it's still loading, though I have a fast computer. And with some presets I loaded, um, I ended up having five to seven gigabytes of RAM needed. So for all of you guys running a laptop with just eight gigabytes of RAM, this might be a problem. So 16 would be great. I have 32. I have no lagging issues with that. But um, just be aware of that, that you need quite a lot of space to run this operation. So here's the Gretsch Square Batch Kit, which sounds amazing. <laughs> I mean, just listen to the kick drum, how warm and fat and well recorded they are. Just amazing. And for some uh, drum nerds out there, you might think of, well, wait, Gretsch Square Batch, 1980s and Atama Breber Snare. I know this setup and exactly this, these are the exact same drums with the exact same snare that Lars Ulrich used for the Black Album. Metallica, the iconic drum sound from that album. And of course, um, there is a preset which is called Black, um, surprisingly. And uh, here's another take on the famous Black album sound. It's not exactly the sound. I think some of the um, other libraries that Toontrack tried to uh, replicate that sound, especially the uh, the Rock Foundry from Bob Rock, which came out, I think, two years ago, has a more, let's say, uh, detailed, but Funny enough, these are the exact same drums Lars Ulrich used. Um, so let's have a sneak preview on the black preset here. So um, just to show you for the sake of it, um, Sonor, um, Birch Kit, um, Birch Kit, Bell, uh, snares. Um, so of course there is a like it's, it's, let's say a certain sound to it. Birch is well known for its kind of like pre-acute sound that cuts through. They just used uh, clear hats on the toms, which again enhances the attack and the ability of the drums to cut through a dense guitar mix, especially in metal. Um, and the metal built snares, of course, um, contribute to the sound as well. Um, simple wise. Um, Zildjian A custom, classical, hard rock, metal uh, um, sound for cymbals. You have um, Zildjian K, which is always great, which gives always like a little darker tone. Um, I like Meinl Bizens as a drummer. I think they sound fantastic. So I'm glad they um, added some Meinl Bizens here for the hi-hat and for some um, crash cymbals. Um, same for the chinas on the left, on the right side. You have slightly different tones, of course, and sizes, but Overall, um, same for the for the uh, splashes, but this whole library really seems well thought and well planned. And um, one thing I want to show you going to the mixer, and let me just check here, or go back to the default setting. This might look overwhelming. Um, there are a lot of channels. Uh, so Mark Lewis went, really went overboard here, but for me, it's not really overboard when you look at it. So the first eight channels are just the two kick drums. And um, when you don't play double kick drums, so you can of course easily disable one, so you can just use one and uh, let's say hide those channels when you just need one kick drum. Uh, you have three different 
kick drum inside microphones, condenser and two dynamic microphones, um, which usually I just use one or two of them, a sub microphone. So it comes down to a common recording setup. Same for the snare. For the first time, at least when I remember, what Tundra is doing here, uh, recording the toms from the bottom as well, which is amazing. Uh, you don't need to uh, and think of, oh my gosh, I have to uh, EQ all those channels. Um, the cool thing here is, and this is the same that I told you with the amount of drums they put into here, it's just to have the option to do so. Uh, of course, you can just route the tom together to one bus, so you just process the tom as one together with top and bottom. But having access to the top uh, and bottom microphone, of course, uh, increases and multiplies the options you have from a sound perspective because from the bottom microphone you can really dial in some fat low end here which is great. Um, same for um, the cymbals so especially the china and the splash cymbals because they have dedicated microphones to pick them up you can really dial in, in um, like for instance automate them when you send those channels to a uh, to your DW you can automate the China symbols for instance in a wild um, refrain or chorus um, so that's great again you have the options other than that you can just send them to the same bus as the overheads uh, or just hide them and just use the overheads um, speaking of overheads, um, one mono microphone, two different flavors, one common pair of overheads, tube microphone, which has another flavor, um, three different ambient microphones, which is great. You can combine them and uh, two different ambience mono microphones. I wouldn't recommend to use them all at the same time, of course. Um, so sorry, I got my message here coming in. Um, it's just like to have options. Um, so when you bring it down to a common setup with just two microphones from the kick drum, two snare, uh, some toms, overheads, and uh, stereo room microphones, at, at the end, it's similar to the libraries you might have already know, but it's amazing to have those options. So this library is clearly um, from me with the headline, no compromises. So uh, again, uh, let me show you another, um, sound example here. So this is the DW Collectors. Talking about the presets, um, there are enough, but not too much, um, and they are well picked. Mark Lewis did some of his own, uh, and Tuntrack made some. Uh, Mark Lewis are clearly more processed, um, so let me just show you one of them. Um, let's um, new flavor, which is of course new metal. So you find some references as always in the presets. Uh, they are well sculpture, uh, sculptured and and made and processed, so it's a great starting point for you who don't. Uh, into that mi mixing, those presets will easily cut through a mix. So here is the new flavor preset coming from Mark Lewis. Let me quickly check. You see, there's quite a lot of stuff going on here. So uh, Yamaha kick drums, the DW Toms, and the Dunnet Cast Iron, uh, with some additional samples here, which I talk about in a few as well. Talking about additional samples, um, the same that you already have in the core library, and I remember which was already part of the Metal Machinery SDX some years ago. Um, when you add um, something, when you want to stack sounds on your snare drum, as always, um, more, stack, add to center articulation. And when you then scroll through the library, of course I have some more, you'll find this one, the Death and Darkness preset sounds which is great because um, what it uh, contains, and I'm not sure if it's just the snare, I think it's just the snares, um, you have five different snare drum presets. So obviously quite over-processed, but um, you will need this sometimes in metal productions when you have like those 
ear blasting and cutting snares that you really need through like those 57 guitars that sometimes are playing in metal. So this is great. And of course you have access, once you install this library, you have access to those preset sounds and you can mix them into any library you have with Toontrack. So that's great. So um, I really, really, really dig this library, especially this one um, called The Death. For me, it's just, I would call it modern. US uh, contemporary uh, music sounding, uh, I can use this in almost any genre, so this is great. But of course it works amazingly well with metal and hardcore and trash metal and speed metal. So enough of the death, let's switch to The Darkness, which is a complete different game. And I told in the beginning when I say The Death is more like a modern, polished, uh, American sounding, um, so this is almost the opposite. First of all, how cool is that they recorded the drums inside a pool? Yes, of course, with no water, uh, but the graphics look great. Uh, you see this little rubber duck here. Um, but this is the actual studio from uh, Two Mudson and at the End Farm Studios in Denmark. Uh, you find some cool videos where they capture the drums, especially in this place. And having drums in a pool, uh, of course, adds a certain flavor to the sound. And this is not just another library. It sounds almost completely different, but great and unique in a certain way. So before I uh, show you some drum examples here, let's talk about um, the drums here as well. Uh, the same for the death. The default kit is a Rima Yamaha Recording Custom, so they w both pick the same drum set as a core library. Um, second one, you have the so-called, which I call uh, the Metalworks, which is a Slingerland chrome over wood. Um, it's kind of like a John Bonham Led Zeppelin style, so big toms and a huge 20, uh, 14 by 26 kick drum. Um, you have the so-called Black Beast which is a Pearl Masters. Again, more modern sounding drums here. Pearl Masters is a studio legend and a legendary drum set for drummers, um, though affordable. Aarhus, Aarhus Abyss Kit. Um, so I like this a lot. It's the Tama Star Classic Performer EFX, uh, a drum set that I really like, especially in that finish. Uh, one of the drum kits I always wanted to own. Um, it's a Birch Kit as well but great to have Tama Star Classic or Tama Drums uh, here included. Really like that. Dark Waters, um, DW's coll DW Collectors. So again, um, a modern approach or modern, modern view on things. DW Collectors always works. It's the sound of modern production. Dave Grohl from Nirvana uh, and the Foo Fighters play DW Collectors and of course a lot of other famous drummers as well. Uh, Queen, for instance, and you have kind of like a, let's say it's not a new complete kit, it's the same Slingerland kit, but with more toms. Uh, this is the only setup where you have um, four, to five toms here with the Slingerland in the first kit. It's just three. Uh, so let's jump back to the uh, White Lightning here, uh, the Yamaha Recording Custom, and you see some, the default uh, snare drum is the Mapex by Panther, and the same here. No wood drums at all, just steel drums. Um, recording customs, of course, a lot with Black Beauty, DW collectors. Um, you need those metal drums to cut through the mix. From the cymbals, um, a lot of Paiste, uh, so no Zildjian or Meinl here. So um, Two Mudson really uh, picked the Paiste 2002, which is again a little bit um, a reference to John Bonham, of course, but Paiste 2002 is are well known for they are higher, um, they um, are brighter, so they cut easily. So let's listen to this sound default, no mixing at all, and you will clearly hear the different flavor of this kit due to the, let's say, um, stone and the way um, uh, when you drum set a drum set in a pool, the reflections on the wall, of course, are brighter, more raw, more dense, um, and more natural, so to say, not so polished and warm as um, the Death Library, which was recorded in Texas. So here's the Yamaha recording custom in the Darkness Library.
So you uh, here, it's um, it's a great sound. It's unique. Um, probably this library is not so much made for, let's say, modern things uh, or other genres. This has a very special, very cool flavor to it. I'm not sure if this works really for any genre, but when you buy a library which is called Death and Darkness, you probably don't think about making singer-songwriter stuff anyway. So I just wanted to mention this, um, that this library in total is so versatile that you can use it, of course, for more genres than just metal. This library, though, especially this one here, recorded in Denmark, is really special. Uh, I've never heard anything like that before from Toontrack, so it's really great um, to have this sound. Mm, you see the setup from the symbols uh, is a little bit different. You have more crash slots. So you have one, two, three, four, five different slots for crash symbols and just one for a uh, China and two different uh, splashes with a cool brand which is called Stringside. Never heard this before, to be honest. Um, so Pisces all over the place, um, even for the... Uh, so a little bit consistent um, in a way as well. So let me just show you, for instance, my favorite kit here, which is the Tama Star Classic. I'm a fan of Tama, uh, Tama uh, Star Classic, so I'm a little bit biased. So here is the Tama kit in the pool in Denmark. Before I forget, um, you have some additional kick drums as well. So you see you have more than just the five brands that I just showed you. For instance, um, they added some Ludwig uh, kick drums. For instance, this 16 by 22 Ludwig Classic Maple, and which is a, a typical Ludwig Maple sound, which I love. A little bit softer um, from the attack, but sometimes it's great to have more options. Um, they went with no compromises here as well, so it's just the different flavor and the way the drums are recorded. But from a setup perspective and from a sampling perspective, um, this goes for both parts of this library of, of this SDX. No compromises, you can switch between kit, uh, kits and you don't have to uh, reduce yourself if you prefer the Tama or any other brand. So you always have the full setup of toms uh, and cymbals, which is great. Um, talking about the mixer, you see that here in Denmark they went with a smaller footprint, so to say. Uh, but don't get wrong, some of the presets, especially here in the darkness, come up with 7 to 8 gigabyte, as I told you. So it's really big. Um, you have kick in, kick out, which is a more classical approach. So no sub microphone was uh, captured here. Snare top, bottom, classical. The toms haven't been sampled here with uh, from the bottom. So this is um, a setup that you are well known to. However, you can achieve, of course, great sounds here. Um, they did uh, capture just the splash, no, so no China and the right symbol individually. And you have a bunch of different room microphones. Um, again, don't use all of them, it's just the way that you can combine them. Maybe you just use the mid and a mono microphone. Um, so try them out, you will find a lot of videos on Tundra Backside and in my uh, preset video you'll find a lot of examples how the different presets sound. Speaking of presets, um, again, it's a decent amount of presets, both from Toontrack and from Toon Mudson. Um, so just for the sake of showing it, let me show you one. For instance, the dry, which is, um, um, which is interesting. Uh, dry is, as you see, So you clearly hear the sound is really more, kind of like more in your face from a raw perspective. Um, so this reminds me more of the famous and legendary uh, old trusty metal foundry, which was recorded in Sweden, if I remember correctly. So both are more the, let's say, the European way of, of sounds, more dry, more raw, more dirty. Um, and the US is really, as I said sometimes, uh, several times already, it's really more polished and bigger and warmer. Uh, but both have, of course, their places in the music world. I mean, Two Mudson is a legendary um, producer, 
and recording mixing engineer. Um, he is, uh, for, for instance, he worked with Mishuga, uh, Behemoth, uh, Hate Sphere. So he has a great credit in metal history. Um, so this is clearly a contribution to the European style of metal music. Uh, and again, uh, recording drums in a pool is so cool. Um, I still really love it and especially the room microphones sound great. So just for the sake, I will just solo some room microphones. So you're uh, going back to the default kit here to show you how cool those uh, room microphones in this pool sounds. Of course, the, um, this SDX, as always, come with a uh, dedicated uh, MIDI library here. Um, the MIDI grooves were, and the fills that come along are sampled by uh, Sean Reinert and Jay Postones. And the library, the death library, which was recorded in um, Texas, uh, was recorded from drumming legend Sean Reinert. Uh, so may, you metal guys out there maybe know him. So. As always, Tunjbeck went full game and just took the, the, the best guys in the industry to um, provide a sample pack that's worth the name when you um, call something Death and Darkness. So um, just for the sake of showing you, I'm going to switch to Reaper right now and um, show you an example what I talk about the versatility of this uh, library here. So that, what I did here, I just downloaded a basic, boring, so all you metal guys, please um, hold your ears now, uh, a boring pop rock backing track and just programmed some basic MIDI to it. Because what I wanted to show is how versatile this drum library is and uh, I cannot repeat this often, don't be misled by the names of those libraries. Not about only this one, but this goes for all libraries that you find, not only from Toontrack. Um, it's for sure some marketing thing going on because metal sells usually better, especially with drum samples. But uh, even you non-metal guys out there, don't be afraid to check those samples out because especially the metal uh, drum libraries are usually recorded in a way that they cut through. Um, and with an SDX, you have the ability to tweak them even further, which is great. So without further ado, I've picked a setup that you would find in any recording studio around the world to record just a song. Um, it's a DW Collector's Maple, a Ludwig Black Beauty and some minor symbols. So there's nothing that says metal to here in a great recording room. And all I did is I sent um, just the kick as one track snare drum, snare bottom, hats, toms, overhead and a room microphone. So this set up here to my DAW. So no mixing within Superior Drummer, uh, what I always do. And all I did here is um, used my one of my favorite plugins when mixing drums, the SSL plugin from Plugin Alliance, uh, which recreates the SSL 4000 uh, console here. Um, basic stuff just to bring the um, the drums into the mix and edit a little bit of snare reverb. So here's the track, uh, nothing special, just to show you how good those drums sound uh, with any genre. <laughs> So I think you get the point um, about those drum samples. Um, 
Again, I can just link to my preset video, check this out in the description box and the drum cover I did with Avenged Sevenfold for the death and using the death and darkness SDX. So what do you think? Leave a comment below in the comment section. I really think Toontrack nailed it with this library. Um, you get, as I said in the beginning, you get real value for your money because just looking at the pure amount of different uh, drum samples, snares, kick drums, toms you have, um, Toontrack made a lot of good things. Um, and finally, they, obviously, they maybe they listened to some of the customers. Um, I'm really happy with this library and as I said, of course it can be used and should be used for metal productions, but it's way more than that. Don't be misled by the name. So even if you don't play metal, maybe you're just looking for some modern sounding, clean, punchy drum samples for pop rock productions, you can really easily pull the trigger on this one. Um, um, together with the Decades SDX, Toontrack came up with uh, in September 2019, which was recorded by Al Schmidt. I think when you have both those libraries, of course, together with the core library, which you need, obviously, uh, you barely need any more drum samples because uh, with those three libraries, you can cover literally everything uh, from the 20s up to modern day productions. So. Leave a comment below, tell me what you think about this, what you like, what you dislike. Uh, consider to subscribe, I appreciate every reaction. Thanks again for watching guys and see you next time. Bye bye.